Hello there, everyone. Um, I'm here. I'm just uh, still recovering <laughs> from, uh, I don't know, I guess jet lag something. You know how you're tired after your vacation. Anyway, here we go. Um, this is the examples that we had for this week, um, the things that we wanted to produce. So this was, excuse me, the first video where we just drew, you know, very little. And let's see if we can have a better arrangement here. Okay, there's better. All right. And so for our sketchbook this this week, you should have come up with something like this, you know. Um, this was the first drawing, and this was the finished drawing. And then we also had um, a hatching, pen and ink hatching tutorial that I thought was really helpful. And then we've got Miss Schmidt, um, her version of how to do um, a pen and ink, you know, still life with hatching for shading. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And all right, let's go ahead and look at our sketchbook. So here we've got Abby, and um, the first thing I notice when I look at all of our sketchbook examples, um, let's just go back to that for a second. Okay, one thing that I, I really would like everyone to start watching for is the curve. There is always, always, always going to be a curve in a 3D object that is round. Okay, and all of these have curves. Okay, so I know that that is still um, one of the things that we're struggling with. So, I mean, this, Abby, you've got some curves here, and I see that, I see that you're really trying to, you know, make those curves come out. But, you know, right here we need just a little bit more curve that's all but it was a practice right okay and then here's Bailey's and I see Bailey did all of the measurements and you know uh, Mr. Paul figured everything out uh, I would also with Bailey's like to see a little bit more curve on the bottom a little bit more curve on the top of things you know just um, like here it's beautiful beautiful you got that curve. <laughs> I'm always going to be picky about that, and I think it's important. Okay, and then here we have Bailey uh, erased her measuring or or redrew actually because it looks so clean. Um, but again, same with the curves. You know, make sure that when you're drawing a curved object that you don't have straight lines going across. They should all be curved. Okay, here's Chloe's. Chloe's got some great curves on her vase over here and all throughout her candle. I think that this one is kind of an illusion in the photograph, but um, here as well I would have I would have fixed that final curve. But like I said, it is a sketchbook assignment and we are practicing. Okay, and here's Donovan. I can tell that this is your drawing from the first video and then from the second and i see that you were experimenting with some measuring here um, i think your drawing looks fine for our purposes i would like to see you make sure that you do those curves but you know that's about all i can say and then i know that you have some more sketchbook um, drawings here donovan and you know what i'm thinking i'm thinking that this was R. You drew that third video and uh, actually didn't even have to. So that's always annoying, right? But you got a, got a, you got a lot of good practice there. Hold on. Where am I? There I am. <laughs> so doesn't that, yeah, that looks like the hatching tutorial. And then here I think what you've got is maybe uh, like a basic still life idea. Uh, I see your frame and I'm thinking again is this a reference to um, Schmidt? 
for this is what she made so it's almost like it is a picture in a frame and there's flowers so I'm just wondering if these are all sketchbook drawings for you oops very excited computer <laughs> all right so um, yes let's go on to Haley Haley's got a beautiful, beautiful vase, lovely curves here, and she got the curves all the way down to that bottom of the, uh, the candle stick holder. And I think that, yeah, that was kind of tricky. But here we have her drawing with more definition. Believe me, I appreciate that, Haley. I totally, totally do. She's always doing so much work. Okay, and then here's Ivy's. Ivy's got uh, a contour drawing here, so just simple edges. Beautiful curve on the bottom of your vase. Just need to have that as well at the top. And also on the bottom of your candlestick. Even though, you know, it appears to be very minor, um, sometimes when you're drawing something, you might want to hold a ruler up to the line that you're drawing, and it might just be the slightest little curve, but it will make such a difference. And then here we have Remy, Remy's first sketchbook video, and the second. And wow, he really got into the measuring. This is, this is, I really love this. That's like, you know, just paying attention to that one little curve there. So interesting to me. And, um, yeah, so your proportion uh, is really good. So you've done all this measuring, um, so you've got the proportions correct. Um, and then you just need to work a little bit on those curves, on our curved objects here. And that's about all I can say about that. All right, let's just go ahead and continue on to our midterm portfolio. So I wanted to just point out um, that we had really uh, kind of strict directions. We had to have all black, white, or gray. So just like plain as could be. And then for each slide you had, you know, a specific thing to submit on each one. And you pretty much had a choice for your your notes or details about each artwork. Um, and then I was expecting that we see <clears throat> The type of image that we've been talking about for a few weeks now, where you have a blank background and, you know, you could even do a seamless sweep like we've been talking about up till now. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing to take. Um, oh, you know what? This is drawing. We actually didn't talk about seamless sweep. We just talked about getting really close to the edges of the artwork and making sure that the camera is parallel camera is facing parallel to the surface of your drawing pad so then you don't get any distortion in the perspective and let's see we yeah so this is like real specific uh, and here's our portfolios okay I'm gonna open each one at a time and let's take a look at Donovan's Got done a little early this time, eh, Donovan? Been really working on it. Okay, and let's see. You could have saved this as a, a PDF. This is actually a Word document. So you, you um, yeah, you title it correctly, but you could go fit, file, save as, and then here's your title. Here's where you were saving it, and here is the file type. So in the file type, you would go to PDF. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> so, you know, you got to let, let it know where you want to save it to. So you don't even need this part here at the end that says PDF, because that will come automatically when you save it as a PDF. Okay, and then it's exporting it as such. Okay, so let's take a look at your pages. 
This is continuous line. And that was your final drawing. So what I would have expected, Donovan, is that you take this image and crop it. So let's say, let's show you how to do that real quick here. I'm going to open up Photoshop, but, you know, pretty much any editing software is going to look similar to what Photoshop has um, on your phone. You know, we talked about last week a little bit, we talked about how the symbols, you know, the symbols of the tools even look similar. So here is... Well, that's not what I want to do, is it? I just wanted the picture. Oh, the hell is it? There it is. Okay, so there's Donovan's. And to crop, we just need to make sure we've got ratio checked, you know? Because that will make it, we can crop it to whatever we want it to be. And then all we want in here is the drawing and then once you get the crop window in there you just hit enter um, some of them are you know return so then there is a much better example of your drawing and I showed you a bunch of things about you know taking good pictures um, so you can sharpen up that contrast which is the difference between dark and light. Okay, get this out of my way. Um, that said, I mean, though this is much better and this is a good picture of that particular drawing, I would still urge you to go back and, and redo this one on, um, on plain white paper. So that's, that's kind of a big deal for the course. And if you don't have any of your own plain white paper, I'm sure you could get some on campus. I would even tell um, Ms. Schmidt that you need this, and she'll give you some. Okay, so it's interesting that you're explaining. Uh, in your, in your uh, portfolio, you want to try. <laughs> you want to try to present yourself as professionally as possible, so maybe just a title. But I like this part. This was my first drawing. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it does feel emotional, and I totally understand that. But when we get to our final, um, let's make sure we keep it real simple. Like this, four-part drawing. Um, I'll show you how to also crop. You can crop right, here, right in Word. Okay, let's see. Oh, I know. You can right click on it. Format. Okay, and what we really want to do is crop. So, see how that it kind of looks like the one that we've seen before? Okay, that's not what we want. I'm going to go step back. I'm not going to resize it. I want to crop it. So, I think... Oh, hold on a second. Alright, I figured out what I was doing wrong. I was here, and this says text box. So, I'm not formatting a text box. Formatting a picture. So, now I can go to crop. And, uh, hold on, let me find the, the quick and easy way. Okay, I was wrong about that. <laughs> I want to find the, the simplest way. Okay, so let's go control um, crop is a special thing. And then when you see these little corners come about, we can move them in. And then we're going to hit return or enter. And da 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 again. We've got um, the kind of image that I'm looking for. I don't want to see the background. Okay? I mean, 
I know I've been stressing this a lot, but for our final, we're going to have to really, really um, try our best. I think, I swear to God, this is a nose, Donovan. I think you were thinking nose, but... <laughs> Anyhow, it looks really good, and that was your four part. Here's interior, and again, what I said about uh, cropping and um, even redrawing on the, on the right paper. <laughs> and this image actually is not your abstract drawing, this is your sketchbook. So that was sketchbook number two. And then these images, Donovan, are actually um, like printed out photographs. So um, you can't actually use that for your portfolio. Okay, I hope that I hope that helped and clears some things up with these because uh, once we get to the final, it'll it'll count for quite a bit more. Okay, so here's Abby. Abby got really fancy with her background. So she chose, you know, like a style and a theme and all of that. Um, honestly, you want to try to avoid all that, even though it's, it's fun and exciting. Um, so like this right here, this part of the slide is fantastic. Um, but you don't need, you know, the stuff around it. You just need your image, you know, straight up. And then here's your details. And, and again, you've got a lot of um, information in the background just by, just by adding that, you know, in your formatting. But I like how simple it, you, um, you talked about it and what materials you used. And I think this is perfect information. Okay, and then there's your four part. And I think this is well done as well. I would just change the, um, only change the style. So it's just your drawing, title, and your details. <laughs> and you see, these, these are great. You just need them on their own. I like how it looks like it's in a gallery. I really do. It's just, you know, for the requirements. Yeah, I love the abstract. Those were my favorite. And there's your still life. Okay, so um, perfect. Other than that, you know, you just need plain, plain slides. Your photographs are absolutely, ooh, almost perfect. So very, very good, Abby. And let's see, here's Chloe's. And there's Chloe's first drawing without any information. And that's exactly what we wanted in the uh, directions. And then it's kind of weird that it's on the next page, but you can title it on the first page as well. It's up to you, but this is, you know, very simple. You can imagine going into one of those art galleries and, you know, there's your work. What is going to be on the little card next to your work on the white, you know, what do they call them? Gallery cards, something like that. Um, so yeah, very simple. And here's her four part information about that. And that was the interior. Unfinished. That's so that's so cool. I like that idea. Um, abstract and still life. Drawing pen. Okay, very good. Perfect. Okay, let's see. Haley. Oh, Haley's got so much style, even in just her lettering. You know, that's like so twenties. It's like you learn in life that everything is going to make someone think about something. 
You know, even the, the tiniest things like lettering or a font. Okay, so here's her contour, great picture. And the details. Okay, beautiful. Four part. And the details. So this all looks great. And she, you know, followed directions with her plain backgrounds. But she put a lot of pizzazz in there with that font. I just can't get over that. And that looks great. Okay, abstract. This picture, and you know, if you get more into art and um, making portfolios, one thing you want to be careful about is squishing your image. So I can tell this has been um, resized to fit and squished down a little bit. And uh, we want to be real careful not to do that. Like one of the things that you can do is you can resize from the corner, only from the corner going in a diagonal line. And that way you won't get any, you know, uh, what would you call it? Distortion in your image. Okay, that looks great. Fresh fade. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, and this is awesome. I love how you went out outside the, the plane there too. You totally um, broke the plane. Perfect. And let's see, here's Ivy's. Ivy's got, she did the same thing as I did when she took her first drawing. There was colored light. And I really don't have a problem with that because it's cropped in. It's on plain paper. Uh, and there's her four part interior with perspective, abstract, and still life is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, so you're missing five of your slides, and that's just a detail slide where um, you can just say something as simple as the materials. So you can either redo that one to earn those points back, or, you know, just keep that in mind for the final. Okay, here's Remy. And at Remy, very good. Put the date on there. Okay, so this is all formatted correctly. Just what we wanted for the title. I would I would do spell check for your details, and um, I would do that in a Word document. So, like, see here, there's a a capital, um, and here is it like a typo. So little things like that, you can um, edit in Word and then copy them into the text box when you're making the PowerPoint. Okay, so I would fix that. And also um, this image is a little bit like one of Haley's where it appears to be squished. So it was resized and pushed down a little bit rather than, you know, cropping off, off the edges. So these parts we need to get rid of and make sure we don't squish. Okay, here's your four part. Yeah, the pen. I think everybody agrees about that. And then this image needs to be cropped. Same with this one. And, you know, that surprised me that you said about drawing with a ruler. That is really difficult. I, I think that that's probably why you didn't enjoy this assignment as much as you could have. And I did not realize that that was the trouble. I just, you know, thought, you know, wow, it took a lot of time to make those lines straight. So we don't really have to do that when we're doing a perspective drawing. Uh, but in perspective drawing only, it does help. I think it would have also helped you here to have like a horizon line and a vanishing point and things like that. But with this assignment, we were just supposed to go by eye. And so I think it was very good for that. But I would, like I said, if I missed that, crop that one. And... <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, but yes, I would crop this one. Abstract drawing. I mean, let me just take a quick, quick look. You can see what I've been listening to. I go back and forth with my musical tastes. 
Okay, so abstract. So see how, you know, if you go to images, you're going to get all kinds of things. So just things that you could have collected, you know, like this is what, like Abby, the direction she went into was um, contour line drawing. So there's, there's lots of different ideas just in this little bitty peak. And then there's your still life drawing. Ah, nice, you have a beach house, lucky. So here um, we've got perfectly formatted slides. I just feel that um, you needed to have on the next page the details, right? So you had 10 total slides of your work. You know, one that's the image and title if you choose, and then the second is materials or, you know, things like that, details. But very good other than that. Okay, I'm really going to try and bust this out and uh, get through everything. So let's take a look at our still lifes real, real quick. Here's Haley. I, You know what, Haley, that, this was a pretty smart idea to have that contrast of dark against the objects are almost like, uh, you know, they're in the spotlight. So you can see the edges very well. And there's her progress. And she taped the edges beautiful. And then got this lovely little frame where she's coming outside of the frame and it does appear to come forward. So I think great job on your pen and ink and your shading. Uh, the only thing that I would like to see more is maybe just a more of a curve in, in just a couple of places. And we talked about that earlier. So other than that, though, beautiful work. Okay, and here's Abby's. Abby tried, um, she tried initially going a different direction, and we talked about it and how, you know, we could simplify the base rather than have, you know, all these angles to shadow, and then you have a hard time even placing a shadow, you know, like, Imagine there was a light source here and you need a shadow hitting what it's sitting on. You know, it would kind of resemble this picture uh, or the shape of the pear. And that's hard to figure out when you are, you know, like you have an odd shape. And then, oh, I had that twice. And here's Abby's final. And I like, I like how she shaded it. I like how one side's lighter, the other darker. I would have liked to see a little bit more shading on, on say, the pear, and the, I think that's an orange, maybe, and even the pitcher. But it is a, a good, simple contour line drawing with a little bit of shading. Okay, and then here's Bailey's. Bailey, oh, I want to see the, the photograph that you were working from, or if you were working from just objects at home. So I'd love to see that. And I think this is a really beautiful drawing. I love how you shaded it. You know what I can't tell here? This appears to be pen and ink to me. Or some pen and ink added, you know, like outlining and, you know, your edges and things. So this one must go before the other because it's totally just you know, graphite or charcoal. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Again, I would, I would pay a little closer attention to your curves, but I didn't, you know, I, I guess I didn't stress that enough uh, in the class so far, but it is something we need to pay attention to going forward. Okay, here's Chloe's and the steps that she went through and with her hatching and more detailed hatching okay that looks awesome so i can imagine that the light source is here because there's a little more shading on this side and it has a shadow so that totally works for me here we've got a little bit of texture okay great job oops 
And then here's Ivy's. And Ivy actually, this is her photograph. So her photograph is a work of art as well. And I love how the drawing was coming out with her contour lines. And this is just spectacular. Ivy, I think it's so beautiful. I love all the shading that you did and the, and the shadows. So I can see all of the attention to detail that you paid here. Now, if I was going to get super picky, I would say, okay, if our light source is here, and these are our, sh our shading and our shadows, then why do we have this here? That would have to be almost like two light sources. So let me look at your photograph again. So yeah, so there's a little bit of shadow here and here. So the light must have been coming from this direction. And that's one of those hard things to judge. It really is. But if you always imagine the lights coming from the side, or even if you take the photos like that, so smart. Okay, here's Remy's beach house. And his uh, contour line. And then we've got a little more shading here. Okay, more shading still. So if Remy, if you could just go in and, and maybe trace your lines with pen and ink and do a little cross hatching um, for the for this assignment, you know, just think of where the light side is or look back to the image. See there's a there's gonna be a light side on the objects and a dark side. And that's just the way it works. So the shadows, any shading would all be on the same side of every object. Okay. All right. And so, yeah, just go back in and, and add a little pen and ink and some hatching and we are good to go. All right, everyone. I know this was a long one, but that means one video means one quiz. Woohoo. So that's it for this week. Talk to y'all soon.